Hi folks and welcome to my video on Watt Bikes. This is a video that tells you how the Watt Bike works. There's separate videos on how to strip it down, so I'm not going to concentrate on that. This is just how it works. So we've got a console uh, which the user can program and gives all the data. We've got a connecting wire that comes to a little circuit board which is mounted just under here. And then we've got various sensors. So let me just talk through the sensors and how this system works. For a start we have a Little, it looks like a little transformer just mounted behind this flywheel at the front. Now that's actually a device to count the number of pulses or the revolutions, in other words, the speed at which this flywheel is turning. And also it, it will be used to generate power. So you need to be able to check the transformer behind there. It's not a transformer, it's a sensor or a generator, whatever you want to call it. But you need to be able to test that. And then that's connected through to a circuit board, which is this single circuit board, which is mounted behind the sprocket. Now we've got another sensor here, this doesn't look much like a sensor, it's actually an arrangement, a metal arrangement with a bracket which is connected to the chain. And what happens is when I pull the pedal like that, the chain has a tendency to jump up. And it's actually a strain gauge inside the metal bar here, so it's measuring the amount of force that you're exerting on the pedals every time you push down. It causes the chain to rise and that's measured by the strain gauge, so that also connects into the circuit board. Now that's not an easy thing to test, it's actually got five wires on it, so it's a powered device, which means that you can't easily test that. But looking at the construction of it, it looks to me as though it's fairly robust, and I, I doubt whether there's an awful lot of problems with that, but if you have got a concern with it, just change it, okay, new one. There's also two speed sensors mounted behind the sprocket here. There's a single magnet mounted on the inside of the sprocket, and as the magnet goes round that clicks two speed sensors, electrically clicks, it doesn't, you can't hear it, but as the magnet goes past it causes both the speed sensors to close, and the, you need both of those speed sensors to be working, they're magnetic speed sensors, so you need to be able to test a magnetic speed sensor, and the reason why there's two is so that the system knows whether you're pressing down or whether you're coming back up, in other words it's, it's a way of synchronising the position of the pedals to the system so that the console, when it's presenting the information, knows whether you're going on the downstroke or an upstroke, yeah, and it just all, all matches, so the, it, the data you get back is meaningful. And that's it. It's, it's a nice piece of engineering, quite simple. Some of the technology on here you'll have seen on other bits of equipment, so for example, the two sensor technology, the two magnetic speed sensors, you'll have seen that perhaps on a on a generic rowing machine such as an Infinity or Body Max rowing machine or a Kepler rowing machine, you'd often get two sensors used to detect direction on the, on the rower and it's exactly the same sort of principle here. Strain gauges, there's something new, we don't tend to come across those very often in fitness machines and also the arrangement of the transformer is quite neat, it's like a generator, so you've seen generators before and uh, you've seen electronic speed sensors before and that's kind of a combination of the two. So, very neat piece of engineering, uh, well worth you um, getting to grips with this sort of thing because it's well within your capability to be able to test and diagnose and fix. So, best of luck, any questions, let me know.